Hey guys, I'm Rachel. Welcome back to Pencil Stash. Today we are going to be doing the third bird in our little series where we are coloring four little vignettes of birds from Joanna Basford's Worlds of Wonder. And today we are tackling the Blue Jay. So let's get started. So the first thing I did was actually find some reference photos and I just use Pinterest. I just find it the easiest uh, just to save a couple of images that I can use as like placement for colors and some of the shapes and whatnot. Uh, and then I actually went into my color charts and I just sort of pulled a couple of colors and I tried to keep it simple. Sometimes I pulled too many. So I just try to just grab a couple and I really kind of stuck around in like this kind of hue here and then I pulled out like um, Copenhagen blue just for a little bit of depth. Um, I have found that the blue jay is kind of a purpley blue so I'm gonna have to try to kind of figure out like how to really convey that um, but this is kind of the range that I pulled and uh, yeah if I need any more colors I can always grab them. So after my blues were pulled the other thing that I want to do is also pull a black and I'm not actually going to use black I'm actually going to use a very dark sort of cool gray and I found that the reference photos for the blue jay actually have these really neat sort of like stripes on some of the tail feathers and some of the wing feathers and whatnot so I definitely want to pencil those in as they are very striking um, and uh, this is gonna do the job quite nicely now the other thing that I want to do and I think I'm just gonna do this right off the bat is that the Blue Jay actually also has some interesting uh, sort of black markings around the neck. And it sort of has this like, almost like cardinal type mohawk or like, um, like a kind of pointed crown at the top of his head. But then it kind of comes down into like a black shape here. So I might actually utilize some of these tail feathers, or not tail feathers, head feathers. And then, just sort of continue that downward. And I'm just going very lightly for now. It is very dark on the actual bird, but once you, once you kind of press down, it's hard to go back from that. So just start light and then we'll start to add some depth here. And then it's also sort of down his neck. So I might try to maybe utilize some of these feathers as well. And then we'll do some tail feathers here. And what I was really drawn to are these like interesting little just kind of stripes on the tail feathers. And they're about equidistant all the way down the back. And I think I might try to have this one just a little bit offset just to make it. And then there's a really neat sort of like white space right here. And it's bordered by those same sort of little black stripes. And then you've got some feathers that just have the black stripes with blue. These are really beautiful birds. Very beautiful. So we'll just kind of put some placeholders in. All right, let's jump to blue and then we'll just kind of start to fill some stuff in here. Now, there are also some really interesting moments of kind of a bright blue. So I definitely want to capture those. And I found that they're kind of here on these back wings. And then on the tail feathers, sort of up at the top, and then they sort of transition down to a little bit of a darker blue. And I might actually have screwed up here. The When I'm kind of going over these, these black lines, it's sort of pulling into the blue and making it a little bit muddy. It's not terrible, but if I were to do it over again, I'd probably do the blue first and then add the black on top. So my bad. Now I'm gonna switch to true blue. And I'm gonna try to kind of just stay between those blacks just to maybe minimize some of that drag. And you know what might be fun? If we actually grabbed a metallic black gel pen, I wonder if it would be fun to maybe kind of use this on some of the stripes. Let me see how this works. I'm just looking for these to be a bit more bold. Yeah, that works. Oh yeah, this is perfect. So I'm just going over my lines that I Put down before and you definitely want to wait until you are really sure that you're kind of done with all of the blues and everything kind of underneath just because I don't know how 
well like colored pencil would really kind of go adjacent or up against this so i think i'm in a good place but i'm gonna wait on this one just till i know that i'm kind of done with it and for here i'm just gonna put it up in the very kind of back corners for now and i can always add more later now the other place that our little blue jay has some black is like right here there's like a little bit of like a black kind of line all the way through the eye, right to the beak. And then there's like a little black here up on the beak. And the beak itself is also black, so I'll just go ahead and do that now. And there's just like a little offshoot here as well. And then with white, I'll go in over the beak just to make sure that this is just an obvious little highlight there. So I'm really just going to sort of go around and kind of put the blues where the blue should be and the whites where the white should be and we'll go from there. And I really kind of like being a little bit messy with the black gel pen just to mimic the way that the lines aren't perfect on our inspiration photo. Now some of these here have a bit of white at the tips at the very bottom so we'll switch gears a little bit. All right, and I think that these also have white tips here, so I'll probably do something similar. Now the rest of our Blue Jay is, again, a little bit of that bluish sort of purple. So I'm gonna try to recreate that with this periwinkle color. So I'm gonna do his forehead. And they do have a little bit of a white spot above the black, uh, right above their beak. So I think I'm gonna leave that part white, as well as around the eye, but this sort of crown section is definitely kind of a bluey purple. I already have quite a bit of this bright blue down here, so I'm just gonna add a little bit on top of our bluish purple. Just kind of marry these two colors a little bit. And I'm also going to do the same with my periwinkle down here. That's why I went so light on this first coat here. Now the last thing I think I'm gonna do is just take this slate color and this is just going to act as a little bit of a transition into the white underneath the sort of bird's breast here and belly. All right, I like that. I, I don't see any feet or anything. So I think our bird is good. I actually really like that. Okay. Now, I really want to kind of, again, differentiate it from everything else on the page. So I think I might make these apples like a bright green. I think that might be really fun and a little unexpected. And I think it'll play off really nicely with some of the blues as well. So I'm gonna take this palm leaf and just kind of put this around some of these highlighty areas. And there's actually a color in the Crayola line called Granny Smith Apple. So let's see what this one kind of looks like. It's good, it's pretty close, but it is definitely kind of giving me a little bit more of that, uh, that Granny Smith apple sort of color, but I'm definitely going to need a little bit more. I wish this didn't have this like highlight kind of blob on it. It's a little bit harder to disguise, but all good. Maybe we'll go with this fern color to kind of finish it off. We'll see what this gets us. Oh yes, I like that. And these are looking a little bit too perfect, so I think we're gonna go in with another color just to sort of like bruise them up a little bit, just a just a little bit, just to make them look a little bit more realistic. Let's use apple green. I'm just sort of picking and choosing couple little spots to kind of put this definitely around the areas where like this is obviously shadowed where this like little divot would be at the bottom and then 
couple places where the artist has drawn in these little lines for us. Okay, that works. All right, now I have a conundrum. So I've done green leaves over here, I've done yellow leaves over here, and I've done the apples in green, so I kind of want to do something different with my leaves. Hmm. Now I could do something more in like this like beautiful like tropical rainforest sort of color palette. I think that would be really pretty. And it might even sort of bridge the gap between the blue jay and the apples, but I also, hmm, I do want our blue jay to stand out. So, all right, let's just go for it. I actually ended up pulling all four of these right here. And I think if we sort of use a light enough pressure and kind of predominantly use this aqua green color, we might be able to get away with this. So the first thing I'm going to do is just a really light layer of aqua. And I'm going to leave a considerable space that's just kind of open and white. And we'll see what that sort of yields us. So far, I'm definitely liking the color. So then we'll leave this space here in white. Now this is tropical rainforest and I'm just gonna overlap just a little bit and I'm not gonna go all the way to the white space. I'm gonna leave this white, this just aqua and then sort of have, a, have another layer where it's layered. Now we'll go with teal and we'll do the same thing but now I'm not gonna go as far up as I did before and we'll just have kind of a receding gradient line. And I might even try to play with the shape a little bit where it's higher here and then just sort of trails off there. And I'm using very light pressure where the areas overlap and then just kind of letting them, letting them very nicely gel. And then we'll finish it off with green blue down here at the bottom. And here I am going to use a little bit harder pressure just to get that, that darker color that I want. I like that. Now I'm going to go back in with the aqua and just kind of go over the whole thing and just kind of refine this highlight shape and use the slightest color to blend. Okay, I like that. That is definitely doable. I'm going to do the same thing over here. These leaves over here are a little bit different, so I wonder if I should vary them. Maybe, maybe I'll do two different leaves that would kind of drastically be different from what I did over here. These are all the same, these are all the same. So maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll play around a little bit. All right, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with these leaves yet. So what I like to do when I'm not sure is just kind of pause and move on to something else and then hope that that kind of fills itself in naturally. Now I'm going to jump to the flowers and I think I'm gonna do these like pretty mauve colors with a little bit of purple. And instead of starting with the lightest color like I typically do, I'm actually going to start with my darkest color, which is plum. And I'm just going to start from the bottom and just kind of work my way upward in. I like to do just kind of a little like diamond shape where it kind of peaks in the middle and then kind of tapers off towards the edge of each petal. And now I'm going to jump to Mobulus. And I'm going to do right up to the edge, but I'm going to leave the very edge in white. And then I'm going to go in with mauve and I'm just going to kind of clean up the transition here and just do a little bridging of that gap. And I definitely like these colors together. Not just the pink and the purple, but the, the flower colors and kind of how they play off some of the blues and the greens. So we'll do that with all of our flowers. I love the way that these flowers came out. They're so pretty. Um, so just to kind of reinforce that white sort of edge, I might just try to go in and do a little bit with my white uh, gel pen. Not too much, but just to kind of make that uh, stand out a little bit more and doesn't need much. And of course, I still don't know what I'm going to do with these leaves. So in the meantime, we'll just go in and do the 
centers of these in this purple. And then I can go back over it with the white and just do some kind of messy. All right, I am going to not play it safe and I'm gonna experiment on these kind of secondary leaves here. And I think I'm going to do a couple of yellows and then some of the greens that I've already used, both the light and this kind of teal, to kind of create something new. So let's start with deco yellow. And I think I just want like little peaks of yellow kind of hidden in here. And then we'll kind of just go down the line. This is yellow ochre. And then just a little bit of goldenrod. And I think we can afford to be a little experiment, experimental. I'm gonna play it a little bit safe to begin with and we'll use palm leaf to kind of fill in some of these areas until I kind of know how dark I wanna go. Okay, I definitely like this. I think it's just all about kind of finding, finding a good balance. This is fern and I'm, I'm really genuinely just kind of doing this a little bit haphazard and I'm trying to just stay organic. And then maybe we'll do a little bit of tropical rainforest just to bring in a little bit of that kind of teal color so that this new uh, kind of experimental um, leaf doesn't feel so jarring. It, it, it has ties to kind of other things on the page. It needs a little bit of refinement, I think. Just going back over it with this deco yellow and maybe back in with tropical rainforest just to maybe highlight the main kind of veining. And I'll do the same thing on these other leaves. Then we'll use yellow ochre in this sort of little petal that's like peeking out from behind the pretty purple flowers. And I really just chose that just to kind of like have some kind of tie in to the yellow in the leaves. Just really simple. And then I'm actually going to take green blue, which is the darkest of the colors that we used here and I am going to go over the background sort of vine shapes, at least to start with. And I really liked using that black gel pen, so I think I might try to incorporate a little bit here. And I'm gonna try to take this gel pen, it's called Aspirational Yellow. And we'll just kind of see about going over this yellow with that, that's pretty. And I'm not really trying to like do anything other than enhance it. The gel pen just really kind of makes everything stand out. And there is definitely a little bit of metallic in here. So that's always a bonus. And then this one, this is a jelly roll uh, green. I think I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna see what this does. Yeah, I'm gonna go over the vine areas here as well. And this one's almost an exact color match. I was kind of hoping it would be a little bit different, but I'll take it. I was actually hoping it would be a little bit darker. All right, that works. Now, I definitely need a brown for our stick. And I might actually start with this bronze color, and then we'll see what this does. And I'm gonna just try to avoid some of this gel pen while it is drying because I have been known to smear that with the side of my hand. So I'm gonna avoid it like the plague. All right, now I'm gonna take dark brown and what I'm gonna do is kind of come up from the bottom in kind of a random pattern as well as down from the top so that pretty much the bronze is just sort of in the middle there. And then with sepia, I'm gonna do just the very edge. All right, now all we have is the background. And 
And I'm really liking all of the sort of tropical colors here. And so I'm gonna use Salmon Pink, and this does have a tendency to be a little bit overpowering. So I am just going to go very lightly and hope for the best. See, but it's kind of like this beautiful sort of salmon-y peach color. All right, so now my main sort of vignette is colored. And just like in the other ones, I wanna do something like a little bit unexpected, kind of around the edges. And I really liked this Aspiration Yellow gel pen. And just to kind of pull this outward, because it's very much in the center, just kind of maybe pull this outward is, I don't know, maybe kind of do some yellow dots. And I kind of want to do maybe like big ones, like equidistant around the perimeter. And then maybe do like five small ones. I don't know. I am very much just kind of winging it at this point, but that's okay. So I think I'm gonna do the big dots first and maybe I won't go all the way around just to kind of keep it a little bit unexpected. Maybe I'll just kind of stop at the tail. All right. I like that. I think it's just a little bit unexpected, just a little bit kind of outside the boundary lines. And I think it came out really cute. I definitely love the color palette. This one to me just screams tropical, but a little bit subdued tropical, and I love it. Now the Blue Jay is definitely kind of the most kind of realistic. I really like the placement. I think that the addition of the black gel pen was kind of instrumental to really making a lot of these little kind of stripey bits um, pop. And so I'm really, really glad that I did that. And it kind of opened up the option to maybe add a little bit more uh, gel pen in as I went. So this one was really, really fun. We only have one more left. And before we sign off, a couple of things. Uh, one, I would love it if you guys would like this video, if you're enjoying my content. Leave me a comment down below. I love hearing from you guys. Let me know if you're liking what I'm coloring, if you're hating what I'm coloring, I'll take anything uh, that you guys want to put down in the comments. I really appreciate it. And of course, subscribe if you're liking the content and uh, just kind of want to continue to see stuff from me. Um, and then the other thing is just a reminder that I do have an Etsy shop. I sell like the Disney kind of mini ears that you buy in the parks. I sell stands that are 3D printed um, so that you can display some of that uh, kind of stuff when you're at home and not wearing them. So super fun. I will leave a link down in the description for you guys to check out. Um, and then one more thing, I actually was sent, this video is not sponsored, um, but I was sent a very cool uh, desk lamp to try out and I've used I've used it with coloring, I've used it with, um, you know, just kind of being a desk lamp for my regular kind of nine to five job, and I really, really like it. So I did want to uh, just kind of show it off a little bit, and uh, if you guys are interested in checking that out, uh, there is a link in the description uh, as well. And here is just a little bit of a sneak preview of exactly what that looks like. It has a lot of different features. There's it actually turns on with just like a little tap uh, at the corner and there's actually a couple of different modes that you can do in terms of the uh, warmth of the light that actually comes out of it. It can be a little yellow, it can be a little bit brighter. Um, super, super cool. So if you guys are interested in checking that out, I highly recommend it. It's a little bit on the pricey side, but if you're looking for something that's kind of very focused, very streamlined, and uh, you know, just kind of like makes a little bit of a statement on your desk, this could be an option for you. So thank you again. I really appreciate you guys sending that to me and uh, appreciate you guys checking it out. If you're interested, again, link down in the description and I will see you guys next time where we will be coloring our fourth and final bird down here in the corner to finish off our page. So thanks again for joining me. In the meantime, happy coloring. Bye-bye.